Hi everybody, English Bob here. Welcome to today's video. Today's video, I'm going to be having a look around Peppermint OS 11, built and based off of Debian Bullseye. I'll be just giving you a brief overview of what it comes with um, and why I've chose it as my daily driver. Um, it's now end of January 2023. It's the first time I've really had a good look at it since it's been updated late 2022. This is a full install onto bare metal running on my aging AMD Ryzen 5 PC. So let's get into it and have a look. So Peppermint has migrated into its own continuous delivery OS based on Debian Dev1 repositories, giving you the option to pull from testing if you like. And we believe this will appeal to new and experienced Linux users. Peppermint comes with nearly nothing installed other than the core packages needed to run the system. You have the choice to which packages should best fit your build. The desktop environment is XFCE with the Nemo file manager set as default. So there we go, let's get into it. So it's an XFCE um, desktop interface highly customizable you can make peppermint your own very easily built and based on plain vanilla debian bullseye um, peppermint do include some nice little utilities right out the box which really really should help most users who are new over to peppermint to get up and running now as stated on the website peppermint comes with absolutely nothing which is ideal for me because I can just install what I want rather than having a whole raft of software and applications pre-installed which you neither want need nor will ever use so that's a big thumbs up from me it does come out of the box with no web browser but if you start the peppermint welcome screen and click on the app and web browser pop in your system password then you should find that there are a selection of web browsers you can install um firefox mozilla open source browser is actually firefox esr which makes total sense because that's the version that's available currently for the 32-bit peppermint does come in 32 and or 64-bit it's ideal for older hardware and by older hardware i don't mean 20 year old computers but even computers that are three or four years old, absolutely perfect for them. It will fly on them, especially if you run it via an SSD rather than an HDD. Very, very quick, lightweight operating system. So once you've decided which one of these browsers you want to install, uh, just put a tick in the box and click Install Selected, and it will bring it down inst and install it. Alternatively, you can go ahead and install your own i'm surprised they've not included google chrome they have included included chromium um and it's very much a matter of debate i know but i still think google chrome pound for pound is probably the best media codec driven web browser there is and it's certainly an awful lot of people's favorites i know there's a lot of people in the free and open source community that neither like nor trust google chrome but it's still a fantastic browser um, whichever way you want to look at it and I just think rather than using the free and open source which you might have issues with you may as well just get Google Chrome right out the bat <clears throat> but that's your choice you can go ahead and install whatever web browser you feel like now you've also got access to the peppermint hub system changes and customizations which is this thing here the peppermint hub and it'll give you a general selection of utility tools which is really really useful it will also give you access to software tools um ice ssb has now changed its name to kumo uh i don't know why that would be um i guess the app's been rewritten and tidied up uh it's very nice it's great it basically allows you to take any website you like for instance microsoft word online and turn it into a desktop type application rather than just having it open in a web browser it opens in its own window you can assign it its own logo etc etc so if we go to uh, uh, uh i'm sure i put it in internet uh maybe i didn't maybe i am there it is office so if we open up microsoft outlook online you can see now it opens up in its own window rather than in a tabbed web browser 
and it gives it the look and feel of an inbuilt application rather than just being something running in a web browser which actually it is but again that is a really really nice little touch why they've changed it from ice ssp to kumo as i say i have no idea but anyway you then have the app image up um, you have the synaptic package manager gnome web store flat hub snaps and pepscope now out of the box both flat hubs and snaps are not activated by default so a big thumbs up to the peppermint creators for that for me that is the right way let people decide what they want to use on their operating system and that was also the previous developers ethos and of a very very successful one it was as well you get all the normal stuff that xfce and peppermint would come with um as i say it's very bare bones uh, very basic it's very very lightweight on your system it will run super super fast um and hopefully with it being built and based off of debian it will be very very stable however you may have to add third party repositories if you want more up to date software i'm just saying that so who is peppermint os 11 for is it for a new user hell no hell no there are far and away better debian based third party pre-compiled distros out there than peppermint um, and three that immediately come to mind would be mx linux number one by a country mile esnix linux esnix os number two which is another really good debian based distro and also sparky linux another great debian based distros they're not my recommendations, they're just suggestions of three other distros that will be far better than this. The other thing to bear in mind is Peppermint OS 11 is new. Although Peppermint's been around a long time, this iteration of it is very new. So it's going to take time to settle down, bed in and get better and better and better, hopefully, as it goes along. So therefore, in my opinion, I would not recommend this or, let me use a better word, suggest this for a new user or even for an experienced user. Why am I using it? Well, I'm using it basically because of nostalgia. Back in the day, Peppermint was my favourite distro of all time and I loved it under the previous developer. That iteration differed greatly from this iteration. It was built and based off of Ubuntu. It had an LXDE desktop interface with elements combined and morphed in from XFCE. This distro is no such beast. It's built and based off pure Debian and has a straight XFCE desktop window manager. So, horses for courses. I've decided to run with Peppermint because it's been a while um, since I first looked at it. I didn't like the initial iterations. I don't know what the original developer's feelings and thoughts would be, no matter what I might say or suggest. Um, I think he would probably be okay with it, to be honest. Um, but hey, look, it's all going to be speculation. You're never really going to know, are you? He might love it. He might absolutely hate it. I'm guessing he probably would have been okay with it. Um, but it's a it's a stark change from the Peppermint OS 10 the, that I fell in love with and all the previous iterations of Peppermint. But hey, it's what it is. It's what we've got to play with. Um, and I know there's a gazillion different distros on a whole host of different bases with a ton of different window managers. At the end of the day, people use what works for you. But for me personally, Peppermint OS 11 for my personal use case gets an absolute 10 out of 10 gold star really really happy with it thanks for watching please rate comment subscribe thumb the videos up or down i will see you for another wicked english bob video